So I have a policy question for you, which I'm going to lead, uh, use to lead to a personal question in, in some of our, our closing moments. You know, the crucial emphasis of your personal work and the Peterson, uh, sorry, sorry, the Paulson Institute's work over the years has, has been in environment and sust sustain sustainability. One could make a case in China that it really is going to be impossible to sort of move the needle in China because uh, the needs for development are so intense, so many people coming into the cities, uh, you know, getting the gasoline to be cleaned up in Beijing is too costly, et cetera. What are reasons to think there can actually be positive leverage there on the Chinese environmental situation? Well, th that to me is the big question because if you look at the story of the last 10 years, China has done extraordinary things in terms of their investment in clean technologies, in terms of turning, shutting down dirty plants, and, and so on. But they've been been losing the war. The, 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 the environment it's just been it's just been blown away by this rapid pace of growth. What makes me at least cautiously optimistic is that the Chinese people care so much. And the Chinese people are not going to accept the dirty air and the dirty water. So now the question is, what do they do about it? Because one of the issues I sort of shorthanded when I talked about the challenges that Xi Jinping has is they don't have, they have good laws, but they don't have the real ability to enforce those laws in many areas. They don't have the institutions in place and their Environmental Protection Agency doesn't have the resources it needs, and the environmental enforcement is left largely to the pro provincial leaders and the, and the municipal leaders. And of course, that's a little bit like, in some cases, asking the fox to guard the chicken coop, because they're, they're, they're being, uh, have been being judged on creating jobs and on economic growth. So the points that I make all the time, and, and people very much agree with, is the only way you're going to create real prosperity is on a long-term basis and with sustainable practices. But what they're going to need to do is be able to enforce the law. And I think there's two ways they're going to be able to do that. One is they're going to have to expand their capability to have the, you know, the organizations like the Environmental Protection Agency enforce it. But then also through changing their performance evaluation systems. And that the uh, and I think that's going to become a much bigger criteria of success and that it won't be possible for, for, for mayors and party secretaries to say, well, you know, GDP grew X percent, but uh, uh, don't worry about the environment. So I, I think they're focused on it. it. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be a big focus. And, and the way I look at it is uh, uh, that, that it, if you care about the global environment and you care about uh, climate and you have some experience that I have in working with China, well, then I'm going to work on it, even if I think it's, uh, it's, it's a big challenge. And just one more, how many people here have been to Beijing during one of the bad pollution days in the past uh, year or so, and an informed audience? Uh, last, last visit I made, the International School of Beijing has put an airlock over its playing field so that kids can go out, out, outdoors uh, to exercise. Um, my contention is that this actually is the main threat to the stability of the regime. Uh, do you agree and do you think they agree? That, that, that pollution, birth defect epidemics, cancer epidemics, this is not sustainable. Yeah, I, I would say if you would say what are the threats, the biggest point of unrest is still the property rights because the municipal finance, they need municipal finance system. Mayors don't really have adequate, don't have uh, adequate authorities, budget authorities. They don't have transparent budgets and what they, what they do is they fund their growth by taking land from the from the farmers and selling it, and that leads to urban sprawl. So that's a big area. Corruption is a big area, but very fast, the environment is becoming the biggest. People aren't wanting to live in Beijing. If you're successful and you can afford to live elsewhere, uh, it's difficult to subject your your families to to that to that air. And so this is a problem in a, in, in a number of areas in China. And of course, this goes hand in glove with the other issue they have, is they have 300 migrants in China 
living in the cities that have left their homes in the farm but without legal status, and so they don't have the same economic benefits, education benefits, you know, opportunities. And so this winter, a lot of them were forced to burn dirty coal to stay warm. So you can't just, that's why I said the challenges are gonna have to figure out how to sequence these reforms. You can't just, they can't just normalize the labor market or everybody will be in Beijing all at once. And so it's gonna take a balanced approach, but I do agree with you that the environment is a huge area of focus.